It's a beautiful morning in Ulaanbaatar and after a delicious breakfast at our fantastic hotel, Oscar and I are ready to explore. Hey beautiful people, good morning from Ulaanbaatar. It's our first morning here and yesterday was kind of adventure. We spent three hours in the traffic. Who's gonna know that there's so much traffic in Ulaanbaatar? And two days we're gonna spend here in Kempinski Hotel. And we're trying to figure out how to change money, how to navigate the city. It's gonna be really, really exciting, so stay tuned. Public transport in Ulaanbaatar is difficult to navigate for foreigners. And we were planning to spend the whole day exploring. Instead of constantly looking for taxi, we've booked a driver for the day. It was once more arranged by our online tour agent that Oscar found. We are in a taxi and we're going to a really beautiful socialist town monument. Very, um, how to say, brutal. Our first stop is Zaisan Monument, just 20 minutes from the city center. Located in a newly developed residential area, you can see the wind of change slowly coming to Mongolia. Lots of new buildings, shopping malls, and signs of Western and lots of Korean influence. And this is Zaisan Monument, and I'm just here at Wambator. Look at this! The Zaisan Monument, situated atop a hill south of Ulaanbaatar center, holds great significance for Mongolia. It was constructed in the 1970s to commemorate the Soviet Mongolian soldiers who fought during the Second World War. Reminds me of some of the monuments that we have in Bulgaria. There is a big one called Buzluja. The focal point of the monument is a striking grenade sculpture of a soldier standing proudly in the front. Behind the soldier, the monument features a captivating mosaic circular enclosure. As you reach the monument, you will be rewarded with breathtaking panoramic views of the city and its surrounding landscapes. It's remarkable how the landscape changes and girls give way to flashy commercial and residential buildings. The best time to visit the Zaisan monument is at sunrise on sunset when the golden hues paint the city in ethereal light. We had many more stops on our schedule but before moving to the next attraction, we had to pay a visit to a beautiful Buddha statue in a park of a gated residential community. It was interesting to see how during the socialist time, atheistic aesthetics and communist propaganda were given a spot to shine. Still, to this day, the country is returning to its Buddhist roots. Next on our adventure is the Palace of the Bok Han, an architectural gem within the city limits. Built in the early 20th century, this palace was the residence of Mongolia's last monarch, the Bok Han, who ruled from 1911 to 1924. Now the palace serves as a museum to display the amazing history and objects of what before was grandeur and more beautiful accommodation. The Green Palace, the imperial residence of the Bok Han. The Bok Han was not only a political figure, but also served as a spiritual leader, holding the title of Bok, meaning holy or saint in Mongolian. His palace is a testament of the fusion of political and religious powers during that era. The palace is a unique blend of architectural styles incorporating elements of Mongolian, Tibetan and Russian designs, resulting in a visually striking and culturally significant structure. The palace complex consists of six main buildings, each serving a specific purpose, including the residence of the Bokhan, a ceremonial hall, and a personal shrine. December 29, 1911 was a historic day, the day Mongolia declared its independence. To commemorate that, the Peace and Happiness Gate was constructed between 1912 and 1919 in front of the Bokhan Green Palace, which still looks magnificent today. The palace's ornate rooms showcase exquisite Mongolian artwork, traditional furniture and religious artifacts. You will get a glimpse into the opulent lifestyle of Mongolia's royalty, including their hobbies and personal tastes. The Bokhan Palace Museum has been continuously operational for over 90 years and is one of Mongolia's oldest museums. Opt for a guided tour to fully appreciate the historical significance and hidden stories behind the palace artifacts. As a foreigner, you are asked to pay extra to access the museum grounds but consider this as your investment in preserving Mongolia's great cultural heritage. It's 
started to rain and it was the perfect time to move to our next stop in our plan, the Mongolian Museum of History. What a perfect weather to visit the museum. The rain makes you feel like you're not missing out on anything happening outside and justifies the time we're about to spend inside learning about Mongolian history. Located in the heart of Ulaanbaatar, this museum houses an extensive collection of artifacts spanning Mongolia's ancient history to the present day. Here, you will discover the nomadic heritage of Mongolian people, explore the rise and fall of the Mongolian Empire, and gain insights into the country's cultural diversity. From traditional clothing and weaponry to archaeological discoveries and interactive displays, the museum offers a comprehensive journey through Mongolia's fascinating timeline. Besides the typical exhibition about the country's history, they had a unique hall dedicated to traditional costumes from different regions. I was impressed by the aesthetics and the variety of styles of the over 20 ethnic groups in the Mongolian Empire. The exhibition covers three different historical periods and displays everyday official and ceremonial quoting. When we visited, they had a special exhibition on recently discovered tombs with rare findings of cloth materials preserved through the ages. Unfortunately, the exhibition was only in Mongolian, so we had to ask for English-speaking staff to do a short overview of the exhibit. They made us pay quite a lot for this temporary display, so I didn't feel guilty to ask for some assistance in figuring out what it was about in English. Our final stop takes us to the serene Gandan Tekchin Land, a Buddhist monastery nested in the outskirts of Ulaanbaatar. It's a really beautiful area here. Luckily, it's stopped to rain, so we can enjoy our time. And the Buddha inside of this building is huge, it's absolutely humongous. You have to come here if you are visiting uh, Ulaanbaatar, it's one of the most amazing places. Initially established in the 18th century, the monastery has a rich history deeply rooted in the Mongolia's Buddhist tradition. The monastery was destroyed during the communist era in the 1930s. In the 1990s, following Mongolia's democratic transition, it's been slowly restored to its current state. The Tibetan name translates to the Great Palace of Complete Joy. Gandan Monastery is a place of worship and pilgrimage, attracting both locals and tourists seeking spiritual solace. If you compare it with the well-groomed Korean Buddhist temples, the monastery might look a bit unpolished, but don't judge from the outer look. One of the highlights of this monastery is the magnificent statue of Megjan Raisak, the Bodhisattva of Compassion. Guys, this is absolutely amazing. Look at this Buddha statue. So big. The Gandan Monastery serves as an important center for Buddhist learning and practice. It's home to the largest Buddhist library and university in the country. With this last amazing spot, our exploration for today is complete. It's time to get some food and we decided not to risk it. It turned out there is a pretty good sushi restaurant on the premises of Kempinski Hotel. So we refreshed in our room and rushed to eat. Hey, I'm at Sakura restaurant, it's in Kempinski Hotel here in Wampador. And yeah, let's uh, try the sushi. Looks pretty good. our second day in the beautiful country of Mongolia. Tomorrow we will be exploring outside of the capital and will visit the oversized statue of Chinggis Khan and the Turtle Rock in Tiriuch National Park. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you enjoyed this video leave a comment or share it with your friends. See you soon!